All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. We are in Danny's fish shed. Hey guys, welcome and back. And giving you an update on where we're at with this build. And I thought it would be cool to kind of get a before. <laughs> I'm holding my water bottle. You are holding your water bottle. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> What's the big deal? You're drinking some water. You sprung it on me, okay. <laughs> All right, everyone, we're back at Danny's Fish Shed with an update on the Fish Shed build. Hey guys, welcome back. And I thought it would be cool to get a before because it already looks like a miniature paradise in here and, it, and it's, I think it looks pretty dang cool. It's coming together a little bit, but this is definitely uh, not the finished product. And not by a long shot. Well, as you can see, all the tanks are empty, yes. except for a few. I've got barely the tank started. It's uh, definitely starting to to feel like a jungle in here, which was my 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 plan, uh, but not the finished product for sure. And we need some advice. So we're making yes. this video to show you <laughs> where we're at and we need advice on lighting and we'll get some closer shots of all this. But uh, yeah, that's, this is where we're at. We're gonna go through everything here and just kind of take a, take a peek, I guess. So I'm gonna just pan around here. And this is 20 by 12. Yes, 20 feet long, 12 feet wide. Um, it's got eight feet high on the ceiling before the rafters. And we were originally gonna lay a drop ceiling for insulation, but I really wanted to take advantage of the height. So we, we did an inlay with the rigid insulation and then I sprayed the entire building, including myself. I still have paint in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, I was wondering where you're like going with three that. months later. <laughs> yeah, so this like, this is all insulation right here. It just yes. looks like a piece of wood, but it's that foam, like two inch thick foam insulation. Yes. And then we've got central air line tubing. Yes, and that was uh, another thing. Air I, loop is what I was trying to say, sorry. Air, air loop, it goes to the, uh, air pump over here and I got the linear air piston pump that Aquarium Co-op uh, debuted I think this year right yep this year yeah I went down to the store and picked that up and finally I'm getting to put it to use so I'm super excited that was definitely one of the hardest parts actually was finding the hardware to hook that up efficiently to the system so far I just have it drilled for the top tanks and I'm really just gonna start with the 20s um, getting the tub fish into the quarantine, kind of starting it out like a quarantine. I'm gonna add some plants that I have in the house um, from the plant orders we got this summer and gonna put those in the tanks to kind of get it going. And uh, these tanks here are somewhat temporary still. I have tanks in the house that will fill in some of these gaps and will be a bit more uh, planned out. But the top row is gonna be all 20s. Uh, all 20, 20 longs. 20 longs, um, it's housing a couple tens right now because I'm actually going to be moving uh, the Episto breeding tank in here. And it is dollar per gallon sale right now. Yes, it is. <laughs> so what's the second row is going to be 40 breeders, correct? 40 breeders, yes. And then two on e each side of this middle section? Two on each side. I have the 255s, which are actually going to go down here. I've got a 75 and then the other 75s in use in the house. But I am actually going to be using those 75s for another build which will take place kind right of here in the middle and that'll be the next after the next phase getting the tub fish into the tanks obviously if i would have been on my original timeline i would have had everything kind of ready to go and just left the tubs out in place but you know stuff happens i think that's one thing we can all relate to is never yeah. enough time and like many people i uh, love to stretch myself thin between a full-time job and a lot of hobbies or kids or you know all the things so I definitely uh, had lofty goals um, but I'm proud because I did a lot of this myself like maybe I'll have to give Bob some pictures to insert of me covered in paint <laughs> and uh, cutting the walls and I I laid this window that's behind these drapes and um, cut it into the wall and I'm super proud of that got a lot of help from some friends and my husband and Bob of course um, and it's still a work in progress. I'm I was called in to move the bricks. Oh my gosh. That's all I'm good for. Another thing that was definitely a challenge was Yeah, I'm so b uh, before we get into that, <laughs> before I interrupt you again, let's let's finish. Okay. Okay. So we've got 20 longs across the top. 
20 longs across the 40 top. breeders, a 20 long here eventually. My 20 long divided tank that I have. In beta the, tank? In the, the beta tank, that's gonna go there. And then I've got these 10 gallons. I have six more 10 gallons that I don't t currently have a spot for. I would really like to do a rack on that door because that door is gonna remain And I keep closed. saying, please don't. And it's gonna mimic <laughs> this, so it'd be very easy to change, but I think I would like to try and use that. Um, I have a lot of betas. They're gonna need their spots. Okay, so and then bottom row, let's get back to the bottom row. Bottom row is going 55. to be- 55s. It's gonna be a 29 and a 55, because that's what I've got for right now, and that's what's gonna fit, because I wanna use the 275s in the build that's gonna go in the center. It's gonna be an eight foot long center island. These, tank, these tubs aren't gonna be here, so there's gonna be a bit more room, but it's gonna be, the 75s on the bottom with the 50 low boys, the 250 low boys on top. And it's my plan. They'll definitely have a top view, but I want to incorporate, I have a ton of pond plants. Like- I can tell. Like these here, these here. Most of these came from the garden and the, and the tubs, but some of these I've had just in the house. And picture top, top view with some ponds, pond vibes. I should say. Pond vibes. <laughs> Pound pond vibes. I'm bringing my, my garden out. into my fish. Shed. Well, you know, when you live in Washington state, that's what you have to do. Yeah. Some of these plants are going to go, like I said, in the tank. Some of them are going to go up. I have a lot of ideas to hang plants from the rafters and on the walls and um, incorporate them on the tank wall as well. Um, but right now it's focusing on these so that I can get the tubs out of the way because on that back wall is going to be Bob's 240. Your 240. My 240. <laughs> but as people know it, his 240. I bought it this summer and he needs it to be moved to finish his fish room build. So mm -hmm. I needed to get this done and I'm behind schedule. So for those of you ha that have been wanting a video <laughs> of his fish rooms, I'm sorry, I'm doing the best I can. Even though it's not your fault, I'm, I like blaming you. That, I like that, thank you. Yes. Takes the pressure off me. Okay, yeah, so these tanks, center island, 240, and then once these are all gone, are you moving your sink back in or what are we doing here? My original design, and this was one of the issues, you know, that you have along the way. Um, my original design with the sink that I made that moves is awesome, but it doesn't really work with the space and the tanks and the design I've decided to go with. So I'm going to find um, a little corner wall mounted sink eventually where the water was plumbed in. And um, then this wall essentially was supposed to kind of stay clean. Now I'm thinking. But I have a lot of tanks. <laughs> instead of ten gallons there, we could line them all up. That's true. There's something here. We could do something. See, I have, I'm just picturing. I also could keep a tub or two. Hey, stop interrupting me. People hey, don't like when you interrupt me. me okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm like visioning like summertime. Both of these doors open. Like, don't have them blocked, especially when we're moving tanks in and out. Like, that's not that wide of a door. So I'm really not for covering the store, but of course it's your shed, your I fish know, room. I know. I probably won't because I'll have those options, but if I didn't have those options, that's the nice thing about these racks. They might not be the most aesthetically pleasing to some. I actually really love the industrial look. Plus, just like you like to rearrange your house, I like to move my plants around. I like to move my tanks around sometimes. Um, and I like the idea of changing the levels or moving the racks around if we decided. We set this up and took it down, I think 18, felt like 18,000 times. <laughs> but I can keep doing that if I wanted to. If we, especially if we did 10 gallons, you know, they'd be easy to drain down, move, take apart the cinder blocks, easy peasy. So what we need help with, we've got filtration done. We've got filtration, yeah. It's all gonna be, you know, the, the air loop with the, the sponge filters, as you can see. So they all have the never clog air stones in them. Yes, the never clog air stones and the air filters, the black air line, which I was super stoked about because I really want this wall to minimize. I want to use black cords as much as possible. I took the time to spray the two I can already see a big problem though. What? Look in there. Look at all the glare. Oh yeah, that's too. Okay, so anyways, we got fil <laughs> filtration figured out, heat, we got figured out. Heat's going. Lighting is what we need help with. You want black filter or black lighting. I don't lighting. mind your idea of finding white lighting, but here's the, here's the deal. Well, well let's, let's clarify. Yes. 
black casing around the lighting, not black lights like we're going to be in a disco. Right, which is part of the problem I had when I was trying to research finding them. They kept suggesting black lights. But no, I want this wall to blend as much as possible. I want the tanks, the fish, the plants to be the standout. And so I've really taken the time, um, you know, even the racks, like I struggled with the racks, you know, taking away from the tanks at all. And that led to some of the redoing of things. A goodwill score. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, I want the cords as much as I can to, to be hidden. So taking the time and I love the fact that Aquarium Co-op has come out with the black airline. So again, I got the giant spool of that versus the tiny pack, which was awesome to kind of splurge on. But we cannot splurge on fluval lighting, lighting for every single tank. I have a couple fluval lights and obviously aquarium lights inside and I I definitely don't have enough to do this entire area and I've struggled with the fact that we were kind of thinking along the lines of a ballast or shop light and a lot of those come in two, four or eight foot sections and these are actually three and six and 19 foot sections. So I have to kind of mitigate that while trying to find black lights and Bob says and by black lights, again, the black casing, since I really want to minimize them. I love the idea. We don't want to see the lighting. Yeah, we don't want to see the lighting. I want to see the effects of the lighting. I, like I don't know, maybe someone, I mean, I'm sure people are going to suggest like Aqua Need, they have black fixtures and they're cheap, uh, but we want to be kind of efficient as well. <laughs> All right, so I think that's it. Let us know if you have okay. ideas for lights. Yes. Because that's kind of where we're stuck, that's even though we don't really have electricity. I don't want to bring a lot of the plants in for uh, the top tanks until I have lighting to support the plants. Um, and I don't want to spend $1,000 on fluval. Um, but I would love the idea of the long linkable ballasts. But again, there's so many options and I know a lot of people, there's mixed reviews. Black. I'm okay with painting them, but I would like to avoid that if possible. Um, but yeah, any suggestions? I'm thinking something long and streamlined along the top. And um, I have a few fluval lights that I'll use, a few spotlights that I'd like to use, but I'd love suggestions. Fluval's tripping. Just sponsor this whole fish shed, Fluval. <laughs> oh, Start gosh. getting some of your cred back. You need to work on your street cred, Fluval. <laughs> <laughs> we got no street cred? No street cred right now. Even Dean says Fluval's tripping. Oh, well, I do love the Fluval lights and I love the, them being on the timer and having it be automated and ultimately... And the I'll, app? Like if this whole room was controlled by an app? That's the plan ultimately. That'd be pretty sweet. I have the little plugs, um, the smart plugs, and then I have the Fluval lights and I have kind of an area on my phone for all the automation, but it would be awesome to kind of get it on one system and I want to control the lights at different times because um, sometimes I like to be in here with just just me in the mood with my plants, <laughs> watching my fish, just like in the tent. So that's the goal. All right, let's close it down. Thanks, everyone. Shut down shop. Thanks for stopping by. Subscribe. Like, subscribe, comment. And Fluval's tripping. Fluval's tripping. <laughs> Fluval be tripping. <laughs>